This is Matt Ellsworth with the American Exploration and Mining Association. As part of our member profiles today, I'm visiting with Phil Baker, President and CEO of Hecla Mining Company. Great to see you again, Phil. Matt, it's really good to see you, and we really appreciate all the heavy lifting the AEMA has done on the Circular 108B rulemaking. This is simply a solution looking for a problem and would have a real chilling effect on the, company, on the country's ability to produce the minerals needed for our infrastructure, energy demands, and national security. And AMA has been a real leader in pushing back on, the, on people that don't understand the extensive financial assurances that are already in place. Well, I appreciate that comment. It's been a lot of hard work. So over in Montana, the Federal District Court has remanded the record of decision for the Montmore project. Could you give us a little update? Yeah, look, we're disappointed in, in the decision, but not dissuaded, because the judge laid out a path for the agencies to address his findings. And this includes the agencies just approving the evaluation phase, which has no significant environmental impact. So the Forest Service can develop a plan to proceed, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife can prepare a new biological uh, opinion and then we just go forward with the evaluation phase. So this could take months, not years, to get to this, the point of being underground uh, and giving us the opportunity to do the work to evaluate what would happen um, for, the, for the full project. So what's the status of the Rock Creek project right next door? Well, it, you know, that's great news. The Rock Creek has been in permitting for some time and we've now received the final supplemental uh, impact statement and a draft mm -hmm. record of decision. So there's the, we're in the comment period now, and we expect a final decision late this year, early 2018. So Rock Creek's advancing and has the opportunity to provide 300 jobs yeah. for Montana and uh, North Idaho. So a little bit closer to home, what's the status of the labor strike at Lucky Friday? Well, you know, I mentioned the 300 jobs that, that Rock Creek can, could, could produce well for 143 days. The, mo the uh -huh. workforce at the Lucky Friday has been shut shut down. Um, and during that time, there's only been one meeting a month ago to consider ideas that we offered to give the, uh, the union, you know, offered to them uh, back in May. So what was discussed at that meeting? Well, it was really an idea to share some new ideas we developed in May that um, focused on wages, silver price premium, and, and vacation. And it's really designed to prevent any employee from seeing a decrease in their hourly compensation. So it really deals with the issue that we heard where people were concerned that they would be losing wages under, uh, under the new, new plan. Under, this, under what we've proposed, nobody will re receive anything less, and skilled workers will receive significantly more. I know another issue has been vacations. What was discussed related to that? Well, the company's vacation plan is going to pay people more than what they had in the expired agreement, and at the same time, it gives us uh, a plan that's easier to administer. So we're doing all this in order to really give us the, uh, the opportunity to um, get efficiency in the mine. Were there agreements reached on any topics? No, this meeting was short. It was just about bringing new ideas. Frankly, the company was the only one that brought ideas to the table. Um, and now that we've presented these ideas, we think everything should be resolved to reach a, reach a settlement. Now, you mentioned you had ideas in May. Why did you wait until July to share them with the union? Well, we, we, we didn't want to wait till July, Matt. Um, um, we were prepared to talk to the union back in May. Um, but they, uh, in June, um, came to us and said they could talk to us again in early July. So for some reason, we've had over 200 employees out of work for a month. And in fact, they've been out of work for nine paychecks mm -hmm. uh, since the strike began. So what other kind of issues are there that are holding up such an agreement? Well, since we have offered to assure that all of the, the workforce will get paid no less than what they had under the old contract. The real issue, and it's really been the issue since the beginning of the negotiation, is allowing Hecla to fully manage the mine. We want to be able to assign where people work, when they work, um, as, as needed. Under the prior agreements, the senior miners dictated where they would work and with whom they would work. 
there's really no other mine in the U.S. Or, or, and not very many in the world that operate under this system. Um, and so it's a system that we think needs to change. Well, I tell you, around AEMA and our many members, I've never seen a system like that. Well, yeah, because this system gives tremendous power to the senior miners and it really reduces the opportunities for employees with low, lower seniority. These senior miners dictate who can mine and with whom. And unless one of the senior miners chooses an employee to mine with them, that employee is unable to earn the large mining bonuses regardless of the miner's skill and experience. So you can imagine what a disincentive this is for new employees to come in who know they can't progress in our job system unless they're chosen by one of these senior miners. This, um, the, the, the system we have contemplated is a system that's based on skills and if you're a motivated employee you have the opportunity to develop the skills that, uh, that, it, that to the extent that it makes the mine safer and more productive, more profitable, you're going to get paid more. Well, if the company and the employees are really both winning under a progression system, what, why is it so contentious with the union? Um, you know, quite sim simply, it's, uh, it's about senior miners losing the power to really determine what happens to these other, uh, other miners. And this power is a status symbol at the mine and not something that these senior miners mm -hmm. want to lose. You know, the mill and the maintenance departments evolved to this system in 2010, so we know it's a system that works. The mine is the only one that, do, that doesn't operate under what we call a progression system. Um, and so, for some reason, there's been this intense pressure for solidarity among the employee base to keep things the way they are. And while this, this system, this bid system had its place, it's really time for a change. You know, while preparing for our talk today, I read some information from the union. And they've argued that the bid system is needed for safety. Now, Heckler has a tremendous safety record. How do you respond to that? Look, the bid system has nothing to do with safety. Uh, the safety angle the union's taken on this subject really has no foundation. There's no world-class mining company or safety system that will allow safety to be determined on the basis of a worker's seniority. We expect every place, everyone in the mine to be safe. You know, when we put a miner into a location, it needs to be safe. They need to know um, how to conduct themselves in a safe, safe manner. Um, yeah, that, that's really, it's, it's really a red herring. Well, wh like I mentioned before, uh, Heckler's commitment to safety is uh, unparalleled amongst AEMA members and mining companies around the world. But it also sounds like the work assignments for a very small segment of the workforce here is the big hang-up. Is that really what this comes down to? Yeah, the key issue is management's ability to assign the right people to the right places at the right time. Only a small number of people that really benefit from the current system, and aside from that, there are various other issues that come up in most labor negotiations, but these issues really have been resolved. Um, uh, the compensation we offered is a clear increase into what they had under the expired contract, uh, and all we need is efficiency in return, and that's what the new system uh, that we're proposing provides for. Now there is an issue of recall rights um, and that's not a key issue, that's one that we think can be resolved and shouldn't stand in the way of a, of a settlement. You know, so many times in these uh, labor issues, it's about wages and money and it's interesting to me that this doesn't seem to be the fact here. That's right, because we've, we've made, uh, you know, we have ideas that assure every employee is going to receive the, a base wage that's at least as high as their combined wage and silver premium in the prior contract. And in mm -hmm. fact, most employees are gonna earn a lot more than the prior contract. So this strike is really about a small number of employees keeping this outdated system that allows them to control the mine. Other mines in the country have evolved from this old fashioned system. Lucky Friday needs to do the same thing. I know you also focus on introducing new and some pretty exciting technologies in your mines. Uh, how are your efforts going along the way? Look, it, this is a really exciting time in the mining industry. I've, I've been in for 31 years and I've not seen anything like this because there's technologies that are going to lead to safer mines and more production 
and it's a it's sort of a revolution that's happening in the whole industry and those that don't adopt these technologies are really going to get left behind so one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to keep get miners away from the face so we're looking mm -hmm. at um, a couple of different things. We're looking at operating remotely, we're looking at uh, operating autonomously, and we're looking at rock cutting machines. And all of these would take people away from the face. And then we're also having proximity detection within the mine. And what that, that does is it allows the machine to know where the people are and, and um, vice versa and you know, to avoid collisions within the mine. So it's all about safety, number one, and number two, about, about productivity. Th these two things will kind of go hand in hand. But now we have seen a drop in silver prices in the recent months. How has that affected Hecla, and where do you see those prices going in the next year or so? Yeah, look, the silver price has come down s somewhat, but to be honest with you, our cost structure is so low that it's not does not have a real meaningful impact on, on us. Um, and then when I look out into the future, um, silver is such a ubiquitous metal, um, the outlook for the consumption of silver is extraordinary. When I started in the, in the industry, um, silver consumption per year was a half a billion ounces. Today it's a billion. So you know wow. that's 31 years. Um, um, when I look into the future, I see it's going to be about a billion and a half ounces over yeah. the course of the next you know, 30 years. So there's a, there's a huge demand for silver, and Hecla, fortunately, is, is going to be there to provide. Well, another bright spot in the future of Hecla is the San Sebastian project. Can you give us an update of what's happening there? Yeah, so San Sebastian is a property that we've owned since 2001. It's one that we uh, had lots of success with. Um, in the first five years and then in 2015 we reopened the mine and we reopened it because we saw this was a mine that could generate extraordinary amount of free cash flow for us even though it would have a short mine life and we thought that we could explore and extend the mine life and sure enough that's what we've done the mine started as an 18 month um, mine life today we're looking at it probably operating at least four years and hopefully longer than, than that. Um, there's an extraordinary potential to mine a sulfide ore body, and if we did that, you're talking mm. about a mine that could operate plus 10 years. Well, that certainly seems to fit right in with uh, your recent annual report in 2016 was titled, A Strategy That Works. Can you tell us a little bit more about that strategy? Well, yeah, the focus has been on having long-lived, low-cost mines, and if you look at um, our three primary mines, they're, they're all probably 20-ish plus uh, years of mine life. Um, and they're all relatively low cost or have the potential to be low, low cost. Um, and when you have a mine that has that sort of long mine life and you have a cost structure that's low enough, you can afford to invest in those technologies we were talking about before in order to improve its productivity. And, and when we say the strategy's worked, it's worked not just operationally, it's worked not just uh, in terms of the financial res results, but it's also worked for our shareholders. Mm. Um, we've, uh, we've been one of the best performing stocks over the last year, over the last three years, over the last 15 years. Um, so, so, yeah, we think it is a strategy that works and we're, we're very much focused on turning the San Sebastian into a long-lived mine, having Rock Creek and Montnor join that list of long-lived mines that are low cost. Well, something that's worked for AMA is Hecla being a long, long time member and many, many of your folks have uh, been volunteer uh, leaders within AMA. What does Hecla get out of that? Well, look, I, I think I think Hecla has been a member of AMA as long as it's been around. How long? How long has AMA been around? 122 years. Okay, I think we've been a member for 122 years, and 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 we've been a member because not only do you support what we do um, as an operating company, but you also support the prospectors and the exploration companies um, that really provide the pipeline of our future mines, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's why we're involved. That's why we have people that volunteer to be 
be leaders and on the board of trustees of AMA, and you guys have just done a great job. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And to one of our longest serving members of AMA. The longest serve. <laughs> Probably the longest. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking a little bit of your time today, and thank you for sharing the uh, leadership story of Heck the Mining Company. Glad to do it. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.